But first, let's talk about the pests that are commonly found in strawberries, starting with the chili thrips. The chili thrips are an invasive species, piercing sucking pests from Southeast Asia, and they feed on strawberry leaves, flowers, and fruits. In this picture, you can see the darkening of the leaflet midrib from chili thrips feeding. Intense infestations can lead to leaf curling leaf necrosis and plant death, and highly infested fruits look bronzed and cracked from the thrips feeding. Commonly, the larvae can be found hiding underneath the fruit calyx, along with western flower thrips, which can also be important pests in strawberries. The two spotted spider mites are also piercing sucking pests that are common pests of organic strawberries. In this picture, you can see an adult female with three of her eggs that are glued to the web that she has spun. Feeding on the strawberry leaflets causes the appearance of stippling, such as the one shown in the picture on the left, and intense populations of the spider mites will lead to the plant being covered with webbing. Another mite species that can cause potential plant injury are the cyclamen mites. Typically, we find cyclamen mites hitchhiking from the nurseries and they infest the unfolded young strawberry trifoliates. They start feeding on these leaflets, causing stunting of the young leaflets, or what is also known as the compact leaf mass syndrome. Fruits can also be infested, and you can find several eggs of cyclamen mites underneath the fruit calyx, and these infested fruits will also look bronzed and cracked, just like the thrips uh, infested fruits. In this video, you can see an adult mite hatching out of its egg. Uh, this adult mite is tan in color, but may quickly turn light orange in color uh, after it has had a meal. And these eggs are typically glued onto the leaf hair, such as the picture shown on the right. There are several natural enemies that are also commonly found around the strawberry fields, starting with minute pirate bugs, big eyed bugs that are both equally important in thrip suppression and other predators such as the multicolored Asian lady beetles, the convergent lady beetle. Here you can see a convergent lady beetle laying a mass of eggs and lacewing eggs that you can see laid underneath the leaves on single stalks laid in a bunch. The minute pirate bugs are really tiny. You can see the adult here feeding underneath the strawberry fruit calyx and it's as small as the strawberry seeds themselves, but they know where to look for their prey because the thrips and the mites like to hide underneath the strawberry calyx, the fruit calyx, uh, or the flower calyx. So they know exactly what they're looking for, as do their nymphs. So we have some very effective natural predators present around the strawberry fields here in Florida. To understand their population dynamics, my PhD student Gagandeep Kaur is conducting field trials and she's being assisted by my other students, Chastity Bear Perry and Marissa Cassovey. And in this study, they are using yellow sticky cards and leaf samples 
to assess the populations of chili trips, western flower trips, and the commonly found natural enemies that I just mentioned, that is the minute pirate bugs, the big eyed bugs, and the tiny flies that are beautiful metallic in color and we commonly call them the long legged flies. So here is a picture of maps from one single field that was sampled between November 2019 to January 2020. And the top layer of maps shows the chili trips populations, the middle maps show Western flower trips populations, and the lowest layer of maps shows the natural enemy populations. And from this map, we were able to conclude that the natural enemies were present in and around the fields at all times during November, December, and January, irrespective of the chili trips populations. And the highest numbers of these natural enemies tended to occur around the field borders. We did see a couple of population peaks in December and then later on in January. But now we know that there are natural enemies present in the ecosystem uh, around the strawberry fields. And so any pesticide use should be decided keeping this fact in mind that there could be some potential ecosystem services already being provided by these natural enemies present around the strawberry fields. A greenhouse study was conducted by my student intern from Earth University, Armand. Armand released chili trips onto caged strawberry plants in the greenhouse. And then some of the plants were treated with Captiva Prime, some were treated with the predator Amblycia swirskii, and some were treated with the radiant. And what we found from the study was that seven days after treatment, both the Captiva Prime and the predator Amblycia swirskii were equally effective in suppressing the adult chili trips populations as the radiant was. And then the predator actually continued to suppress the larval chili trips population through 21 days after treatment. And this suppression was as good as the suppression seen in plants that were treated with radiant. Currently, many strawberry growers in Florida are releasing predatory mites, Phytoceus persimilis and Amlyceus swirskii and Neoceus cucumeris. And so some ongoing studies in our lab are also looking at the hand releases or drone releases of these biological control agents uh, to see how we can further improve the field efficacy of these biocontrol organisms. So as a follow-up to the greenhouse study, we are currently conducting a field study in the organic strawberry plots at the research center here at the Gulf Coast. This study is being conducted by my postdoc, Dr. Jonathan O'Hearn. And in this study, Jonathan is testing a number of biorational pesticides. These biorational pesticides include some biopesticides, some biological control agents such as predatory mites, entomopathogenic nematodes, our Captiva Prime, Azira, Microtrol ESO, PFR 97, so on. So we have about 10 treatments, um, including a control in this experiment. This experiment was conducted on December 23rd, 2020, right after we collected chili trips numbers. And we found that there were at least 30 chili trips at an average on the strawberry plots. Since then, we have been collecting data on chili trips, adults and larvae found in the strawberry leaves and flowers for 28 days. And so far, after data analysis, we have concluded that there are good opportunities that can be explored further. For example, the adult and larval chili trips were effectively controlled by Entrust. Um, and the larval chili trips were effectively controlled by the predatory mite 
Nucius Cucumeris. As we all know, December has been a cold month and so has January, and Cucumeris tends to be a better suited predatory mite species compared to Swirskii under such cold climate. Another promising biorational pesticide was the entomopathogenic nematode product. Both species of nematodes tested in these trials showed a lot of promise, specifically Steiner nema feltii. Other products that showed larval control were Captiva prime and Azira. Something to note here that these products were applied only once during the field season so far. So we are conducting further investigation to see what the effect would be if we included a second application of these, each of these products seven days apart. In addition to these studies, we are also working with the Perez lab uh, and Dr. Natalia Perez has kindly allowed us to utilize the Thorwald that is able to apply ultraviolet C radiation in open field strawberries. This work has been conducted by my master's student, Joe Montemayor. So Joe here can be seen working with Marissa uh, during the day daylight. They are attaching eggs of two spotted spider mites onto live plants. And then they will wait for sunset. And right after sunset, they will wait for another one to two hours. And then they will treat these beds with two doses of ultraviolet C radiation. From preliminary studies done last year, there were two different varieties of strawberries, radiance and brilliance that were tested in 2019. And we found some promising results. In this uh, uh, graph, please note that means with the same letters are not significantly different. The y-axis shows two-spotted spider mite egg hatch percentage, and the x-axis shows the dosage that was actually applied in the field at night. That's 200 and 350 joules per square meters, and there were some plots that were left completely untreated. And it, after observing the percentage hatch, we were able to conclude that 350 joules per meter square effectively suppressed egg hatchability of two-spotted spider mites, so much so that um, in brilliance plots, the egg hatch was significantly less compared to the control plots. Control plots had 57 times higher egg hatch uh, and 26 times higher egg hatch was seen in radiance plots when we compared the plots treated with 350 joules per meter square ultraviolet C radiation. So this gives us a lot of hope for this technology, which can be used for organic production also. So now we know that there are several natural enemies. In this picture on the left, you can see a hoverfly that actually is a wasp mimic sitting on Biden's flowers, commonly seen around strawberry fields. That's also predatory in nature. These Predators are present in and around strawberry fields, and we should be able to utilize the ecosystem services that they provide. And we are also constantly monitoring all the fields for the pests and the products that we can uh, essentially use to keep supporting the production of organic strawberries. <laughs> 